What's going on everybody? Jim Mint here. I'm back at you with another Omnibus Haul. We got a stack of trades and hardcovers to go over with you. As always, these are not reviews of the stories, more of the construction and contents of these new releases. Before we get started, if you're looking to purchase any Omnibus or Collected Editions, check out our sponsor CheapGraphicNovels.com. They sell them up to 50% off cover price. They have immaculate packaging, super fast shipping, and a bargain bin where you can get titles up to 90% off. Their customer service is second to none, and if you mention Gem Mint in the memo at checkout, your next order will have free shipping if you're in the United States. Also, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and stay tuned to the end because we do have a giveaway that's about to end and we'll give you details on how to enter. Uh, first things we're going to talk about are these Marvel trade paperbacks. So Marvel sends us some early copies to take a look at, and I'm trying to get them to send us omnibus that we can get and review for you guys. Um, they have sent early copies in the past, like Uncanny X-Force uh, and the Wolverine reprint and Power Pack. Uh, so when I hit them up, I was like, what's the deal? They were like, uh, we thought you were getting the omnibus early. So maybe we'll start getting those in and we can review them for you. Uh, these first two Omnis are available to purchase on October 7th. They have a Spider-Man The Road to Venom trade paperback. So this is not new material. This is stuff that's been collected in many editions. It collects Venom, the Seed of Darkness, uh, negative one, with Amazing Spider-Man 258, then Web of Spider-Man 1, Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man 107 through 110, uh, with 134 through 136, and then Venom, Dark Origin 1 through 5. This is a thicker trade paperback, more like one of these complete collections, which we have in here as well has a $34.99 cover price, uh, and we'll take a look at some of the uh, interior contents right after we talk about the Epic Collection for Black Widow. This, like I said, also comes out October 7th. It has a $39.99 cover price. A lot of uh, collectors getting into these Epic Collections, and we're gonna talk about this more when we get to the Black Widow Omnibus that's later on in the haul. This is volume two, which covers the years 1981 through 1998. Basically the entire Epic Collection is material that's also collected in the Omnibus. You got stuff like Bizarre Adventures 25, Marvel Fanfare 10 through 13, Solo Avengers 7, Black Widow The Coldest War, Punisher slash Black Widow Spinning Doomsday's Web, Daredevil slash Black Widow Avatar. Then you got Marvel Comics Presents 135, Daredevil Annual 10, Fury slash Black Widow Death Duty, and Journey into Mystery 517 through 519. Let's go ahead and take a look at these first two trades that come out October 7th. All right, here we go. Road to Venom. So, you know, some of this material might have been collected in, like, the Birth of Venom trade paperback, maybe even the Saga of the Alien Symbiote trade paperback. There's definitely a Dark Origins trade paperback that has those five issues. So this is just another kind of uh, format to put this out in, in case you guys missed it. Venom is super hot right now, so it makes sense that Marvel is reprinting, you know, his Origins, the Road to Venom stuff. Here goes the cover of the trade. ASM 258, then we have Web of Spider-Man 1, and then the spectacular Spider-Man stuff that I mentioned. I wonder if this even has uh, when the hand pushes Spider-Man off. I feel like that was a, oh, that was a Web of Spider-Man issue, never mind. And then Dark Origin. So, for all you Venom fans out there, you might want to grab this if you want some of the origins of Venom. And, and these are retold origins. So it's kind of mixing the original comics with some of the later comics that delve deep into his origin. Got that Black Widow baby, Epic Collection, The Coldest War. Uh, yeah, so like I said, Marvel printing this around the same time as the Omnibus. Here you can see everything that it collects here. You can see that cover price. And I guess, you know, one of the big draw to the Epic Collections is that they're printing stuff that is not in Omnibus format. So... You know, I don't know how uh, fans feel about this. Do you go for the Omnibus or do you go for the Epic Collection? Take a look at some of the artwork here. You can see Black Widow going through her different costume iterations. Yeah, you got all the different creators on here. So you got different art styles, different stories with Black Widow. Alright, go 
going from uh, 80s to the 90s there. All right, then we have three trade paperbacks that come out the following week, October uh, 14th. The first one is the Guardians of the Galaxy trade paperback by Al Ewing. I was reading this run. Uh, I really didn't love it. I think I stopped reading it after th this arc, actually. This is the first five issues. That's a $15.99 cover price. If you like Al Ewing's uh, writing, if you're reading Immortal Hulk, maybe you want to see what else he's doing. Um, you could t uh, check out this run. Uh, I don't know. I, I wasn't really digging Guardians even when Donny Cates was doing it. And he's one of my favorite writers at the time. So maybe it's just a tough sell. But that's Guardians. And then we have Iron Man 2020 by um, Dan Slott, Christos Gage, Pete Woods, and Celeste Woods. Uh, $17.99 cover price for this. Collects the first six issues. Or I guess it's just the six issues of the Iron Man stuff. Uh, Robot Revolution. Another title that really wasn't for me. I, I wasn't a fan of this Iron Man run. Uh, there are other tie-ins not collected in here. But if you you know wanted to check it out yourself, the Arno Stark, brother of Tony Stark run, you can uh, pick up the trade. Then we have Winter Soldier. This is not an epic collection. This is a complete collection. So kind of like what I mentioned, that Road to Venom is kind of like uh, $30 cover price on here. This collects Fear 7.1. Captain America, and it collects Winter Soldier 1 through 14, which is the same material that's collected in the Ed Brubaker Captain America omnibus, The Return of the Winter Soldier. So basically, uh, this is just that Winter Soldier run here collected in this trade paperback. Let's flip through and take a look at these three trades. All right, then we got the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, yeah, like I said, I wasn't really a big fan of this run, you know, but, you know, that's just my opinion. You might want to check it out for yourself. I remember they had a lot of the... Uh, what was going on here? The death of Quill. Rocket Raccoon was in this casino the whole time, dressed in a suit, something like that. Um, I think this had like the Celestial Gods that was like the uh, the antagonist here. Yeah, you had some Moon Dragon uh, stuff. Pretty cool how they did the paneling here. I don't re remember too much about it. I mean, I covered the single issues in my uh, new comic book day reviews it does have variants in the back here Fala and moon dragon i always forget their names and then the arno stark iron man 2020 run by dan slot so first introduced in uh, an earlier iron man run that tony had a brother arno and this is him with his big gear cog shoulder blades shoulder pads this also had tie-ins with like Machine Man 2020. There was an I Wolverine two-part miniseries that tied into this. But basically it just deals with this robot revo um, revolution. Uh, so if you're a fan of the Arno Stark stuff, the Dan Slot Iron Man stuff, maybe you want to check it out. Let's see what kind of bonuses they got. The Arno timeline. Yeah, so here's the first 2013 run where he appeared. This is going to be pretty self-contained because uh, they're starting. They started a new Iron Man run after this, so it's not going to be uh, an ongoing. And then Winter Soldier. I'm not really sure what uh, compelled them to make a complete collection for this Brew Baker run. Maybe it's the fact that those Omnis are uh, out of print and highly sought after. But Ed Brew Baker did a, a great Captain America run. Basically, uh, the Winter Soldier movie borrowed page from page on its script. And this follows that initial uh, run here. So Bucky in his own series. Brew Baker's always going to give you that kind of crime noir type style. Realistic, street level, gritty. As you can see through the pages here. <clears throat> Maybe they did it because there's some Black Widow tie-ins. I mean, that wouldn't make sense. The Bermejo, uh, Bermejo Cat, that's cool. Gabriel Del Otto, Joe Kubert. A lot of cool uh, variants here. More Lee Bermejo. Yeah, he did a lot of them. You know, I always uh, correlate Lee Bermejo to Batman stuff. All right, first up with the Omnis, we're going to start with the only DC book in this lot, the Batman Golden Age Omnibus Volume 8. I know that I've given DC a lot of slack for continually 
pumping out these Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze Age books. But honestly, the Batman and Superman ones are the ones that I think that I would keep, even if I got rid of all that stuff and decided to, to do a big purge. I think it's cool to have all the original Batman and Superman comic books in oversized omnibus editions. $125 cover price, and this collects Detective Comics 174 through 191, Batman 67 through 75, and World's Finest Comics 54 through 62. I like the kind of modernized back cover they have here. Let's flip through and take a look at the art. All right, here goes the dust jacket for the Batman Golden Age Omnibus Volume 8. What it contains and the price. They have all the covers on the back, which I like. The inside flaps just kind of promote the other Omnis. You get a little bit about uh, the synopsis of this book. You get an all black hardcover with the indented logos. Let's crack this bad boy open. Got your little splash page here. Creative team. You got two faces, that's cool. Table of contents, forward by Steve Corte. There you go. And there you go. Reprinted in oversized format. You got your Golden Age Joker, bright colors. <laughs> A lot of dialogue on these pages right here, right? Jeez. Uh, old school Catwoman. Yeah, so I mean, I'm sure we're uh, in the area where none of this stuff has ever been collected before. It has to be. There was Two-Face. So look at that Batmobile. Jeez. In the Batcave. Cool history to own, man. I do like that about the Batman and Superman Omnis. I mean, I guess that's the case with all of these gold, uh, Golden Age ones. Then the back's just talking about the creators. All right, guys. Then we have the Black Widow Strikes. That's what they're calling this omnibus. And I think it's smart for Marvel to release Omnis close to their Disney Plus and... Uh, MCU releases so there's a Black Widow uh, movie coming out soon is it going to be in theaters is it going to be on Disney Plus I don't know but it's uh it's good to like coincide these books with those releases so like I mentioned the entire contents of the epic collection is collected in here but this has a lot more stuff from Tales of Suspense and Avengers so basically everything that I already mentioned but Tales of Suspense 52 through 53 with this use 57 60 and 64 then you have Avengers 29 and 30, 36 and 37, 43 and 44. And then it contains material from some other Avengers issues. So material from Avengers 16, 32 and 33, 38 and 39, 41 and 42, 45 through 47, 57, 63 and 64, and 76. So it sounds like those other issues where it collects the full issue, she plays a larger role, but then they just kind of marry them with the other issues that she just shows up in. That's what I'm kind of gathering from this. This also collects Amazing Spider-Man 86, Amazing Adventures 1 through 8, Daredevil 81, and that looks like the only difference. So, uh, everything else is collected in that epic collection. $100 cover price on here. This is one of the few that came with the uh, square bound spine. We'll take a better look at that during the overhead shots. All right, so I went with the Marvel Fanfare cover. I believe that's the DM variant. I just like it to be that old school cover to match the uh, material that's on the inside. And here are all the issues that's collected. As you can see, everything from that epic plus a little bit more to round out this Black Widow omnibus. This one's everything from 1964 to 1998. So we get some... Uh, some info on Black Widow here on the left, and then some more information about the creative team. And then some more info on the creators on these comics. Here is the front of the hardcover, like that little Black Widow logo. As you can see, that flat square bound spine, which I understand uh, they are doing away with. Probably tried out a different factory or something like that. Look, with that spine though, this doesn't even go down at all. All right, so we have a table of contents in the front. Nice little art page here with the uh, people who worked on the book. Here's the creators. And then the actual contents here. John B. Cook on the forward. 
And then here's her first appearance in Tales of Suspense 52. So that's kind of cool to have. Some old school 60s Iron Man stuff. Iron Man and Cap. Yeah, the square bound books are no good, man, because you got to get to the middle to kind of like lay flat, right? Well, that's a pretty cool double page spread. I like that. Hmm. Spider-Man issues. The Inhumans in Black Widow. Kind of an odd team up, right? But I do think it was a good idea to put this out around this time. Folks out there are going to want to know more about, about Black Widow prior to her movie coming out. So what better way than an epic or an omnibus? We have original pages uh, in the back. Some pinups. This was the other omnibus cover, right? Yeah, see I couldn't do that. Gotta stick with the OG. All right, then we got the Bronze Age Solomon Kane omnibus, the original Marvel years. This is basically everything that you need for your Solomon Kane stuff. Solomon Kane is a character that was created in the 20s. He was brought back in the 70s uh, through Marvel Comics after the success of Conan and those type of characters. So what you have is some black and white magazine stuff, and you do have some colorized books in here as well. It collects a ton of different things, man. From Marvel Premiere, issues 33 through 34. The Solomon Kane 1 through 6 series uh, from 1985. You got some material for Monsters Unleashed, number 1. Dracula Lives, number 3. Cult and the Barbarians, 2 through 3. Uh, and a bunch of other stuff. We'll, we'll take a look at it when we do the overheads. This actually came a few weeks ago. I, I got it by itself because nothing else was releasing during that time. And uh, I put it to the side, and I did a couple of hauls since then, and I just forgot about it. So uh, I had to throw it up in this haul. This came out, I think, about a month ago. All right, and then the dust jacket for Solomon Kane, created by Robert E. Howard in the mid-1920s. These are his comic book Marvel appearances. And you can see everything that it collects. Like I mentioned, the first couple of things, but then you have like Savage Sword of Conan with all of these issues. You got Ray Thomas, big in the Marvel Bronze Age with these type of books. Here's some stuff about Solomon Cain, talking about the creators, Don Glutt, Ralph, uh, Ralph Macchio, Roy Thomas, and more. And I actually do, do like the uh, hardcover here. They have the graphic on the front and on the sides. Here's what's on the back. This is the same cover as the dust jacket, the rounded spine. And we'll jump into it. So, I'd say a lot of work was put into this book. It's not my era of comics. Or, or really my genre, but I still think it's pretty cool that they have this collected, preserved the history. Uh, the artwork in the black and white stuff looks really clean, actually. I was actually reading a little bit of that when I was stretching out the spine and kind of seeing what this book was all about. That was John Byrne on there. So a lot of black and white stuff, and then there is some colored issues here in the back. But, you know, he's like your typical monster fighter, do-gooder hero from that uh, from that era of comics. Alright guys, we got a new X-Men omnibus. The X-Men Grand Design by Ed Pisker. He is the artist, he is the writer on here. And this is a series that's relatively new. I think it came out in 2019. It's basically like a retelling of the X-Men timeline. And it was told over a couple of uh, two-part series. Uh, so you had like X-Men Grand Design 1 through 2. Then X-Men Grand Design 2nd Genesis 1 through 2. X-Men Grand Design Extinction 1 through 2. So kind of taking all those different eras and kind of compacting them. And his own unique art style and writing style to kind of give you the cliff notes of the X-Men chronological timeline. This has a $100 cover price. Very lightweight Omni. It kind of has a different paper stock that really goes with the, um, the style of the book which we'll take a look at now. All right, I do like the artwork on the uh, dust jacket of X-Men Grand Design with a Cyclops beam kind of showing like the evolution from uh, ape to man to mutant, right? You got the Dark Phoenix on the back. Just a little close up here of what it collects and everything. The inside flaps here talk about 
This run talks a little bit about Ed Pisker here. And then even like this looks aged. Like that's, that's how all the pages look as well. So you're about to see it. It's actually new and clean. It just looks weathered. Really like how they did the inside of the, uh, what do you even call that? I guess the inside of the hardcover. A mutant milestone, super clean. There's your table of contents. And you see he's kind of got like these Sunday cartoon vibes to, to the way he draws. Very unorthodox. You have the yellowing pages. Starts off with the Watcher. And, and it kind of tries to break down 60 years of X-Men continuity, which is arguably the most confusing continuity in all comics, and give you this clean, cohesive, grand design. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a Fantastic Four Grand Design Omnibus now as well, because they did something similar with FF. But uh, I gotta read this. I, I remember having the, the single issues, and I flipped through it. I, I really couldn't get into it at the time. But uh, I would like to kind of get the cliff notes of the X-Men history. Uh, a lot of the issues, I've read the originals, but I would definitely like to see Ed, uh, Fisker's, uh, Pisker's take on it. It has a lot of bonuses. It has like literally his original scripts and storyboards, which is like almost like panel for panel. So they included all of that in here, which they probably didn't need to include all of it, but I guess they had it. <clears throat> you gotta love the Deadpool Major X cable variant. And there goes Ed. And lastly, guys, this is a book that you probably are not going to be able to get off of cheap graphic novels. This is the Sideshow Fine Art Prints Volume 1. They were kind enough to send this to us. Uh, it has a $50 cover price and really showcases all of the fine art prints that Sideshow has been releasing with some amazing artwork. You even have stuff here from Art Germ, right? The original uh, Poison Ivy Premium format. And you know what? Let's just go flip through and, and look at all of them together. And yeah, man, uh, shout out to Sideshow for hooking us up with this hardcover. When me and Fee were out there in July, she kind of like hit him for a bunch of hardcovers, so they figured uh, we would, uh, you know, enjoy them. So this is volume one of their fine print collection. Really great stuff, man. Uh, Sideshow has been doing a lot, and I think it's super cool how they made a hardcover like this. Look at that sketch. That's amazing. So you got super thick pages. Wow, that's awesome. The Catwoman is crazy. Look at that. Yeah, so they sell prints. I've never been a print guy because I don't really have wall space for prints. I kind of try to stack my uh, one wall either floor to ceiling with omnis or with statues. So I've never really been into prints. But the stuff that you know Art Germ did, which they took a print and commissioned you know a statue out of them. Uh, I like the Alex Ross stuff that they have. And as you can see, they work with a ton of other artists as well. This is an old school piece that they did. I guess they did an art print for it. Scar, Son of Hulk. That's the Batman uh, OG premium format. Punisher comic kit. Got some Daredevil stuff here. Yeah, the Terminator print is dope too. Is that Alex Ross? I thought it was. Maybe not. But nah, I could be wrong. More art germ stuff. Oh, so it says Stanley Art Germ. Oh yeah, this is Dave Seeley. That's a dope looking Terminator. Kind of the process. Court of the Dead, which is their own IP. Got some City Sirens. More Terminator. Highlighting on the artist. So very cool stuff. Addy Granov. They love working with him. You guys know he uh, designed the Iron Man armor for the first movie, right? Dope uh, X-Men print right here. Look at this. I like both of those. Man, I should have got those prints. The Voltron is sick. Future Wars, more Terminator stuff by Dave Seeley. So just a very cool art book. I mean, I'm sure this is for sale on their website. If you guys are statue collectors like myself, if you like their prints, maybe you want to check them out. Cool. All right, guys. So that is the Omnibus Hall. Like I said, we're doing a giveaway. Once we hit 92,500 subscribers... And by the time this releases, we might even be there. You got to comment on as many videos as possible because I'm going to pick one random video to draw a winner to win those sets of the boys' omnibus. You probably have seen me talk about it in other videos. 
Right after that, we're going to start the giveaway for the Sideshow Thanos one-third scale bust. And that's going to be drawn, uh, a winner will be drawn when we hit 95,000 subscribers. Appreciate you guys watching these videos. So uh, drop a comment here, hit the like, make sure you're subscribed, and check out my other omnibus hauls. Stay minty fresh. Peace.